she was? Why can't I take my wife and daughter, and he was involved in this too, why can't I take my wife and daughter to the sheriff's department? And you, what did you guys say? That an investigation needs to happen here. You can't take your daughter because it happened here. Correct, did you I, not say that? A teenage girl who was sexually assaulted in a Virginia high school bathroom has sued Loudoun County Public Schools, alleging that school officials failed to heed warning signs about her attacker and responded to her May 2021 assault by trying to cover it up. The incident garnered national attention. On June 1st, 2021, just four days after the daughter of Scott Smith and Jessica Smith was sexually assaulted, a video recorded cell phone was obtained which calls into question how Loudoun County Sheriff handled this sensitive case. The thing I asked you was, why can't I take my wife and daughter, and he was involved in this too, why can't I take my wife and daughter to the Sheriff's Department? And you, what did you guys say? That an investigation needs to happen here, you can't take your daughter because it happened here. Correct, did you I, not say that? Correct, because did I did. Did you say I, that? Correct. What was actually in the recorded video? Let's find out. So before diving into the video, hit subscribe for a front row so that you won't miss out on our captivating content and be a part of the adventures. So ready for the ride? Let's get started. The Smiths were back days later at Stonebridge because their daughter called and said a promised safety plan wasn't in place on her first day back to class. The Smiths, escorted by a Loudoun County Sheriff's deputy, came face to face with school resource officer Tavis Henry, who's also a deputy with the Loudoun County Sheriff's Office. On the day of attack, the Smiths asked Officer Henry multiple times if they could leave Stonebridge and take their daughter to the Loudoun County Sheriff's Office, only nine miles away. Officer Mike Chapman, Loudoun County Sheriff, refused to view the cell phone video obtained by the Seven News I team. Sheriff also emailed them stating, the family was not detained and were free to leave at any time. But the cell phone video appears to tell a different story. In the video, the victim's father shouted and asked Officer Henry, why can't he take his wife and daughter to the sheriff's department? The thing I asked you was, why can't I take my wife and daughter and he was involved in this too. Why can't I take my wife and daughter to the sheriff's department? And you, what did you guys say? That an investigation needs to happen here. You can't take your daughter because it happened here. Correct, did I, you not say that? Correct, because did I did. Did you say you that? that? Correct. Officer Henry said that the investigation happened there, so he can't take his family and leave. Sheriff Chapman refused to do a camera interview, but he answered the potential questions that were to be asked in the interview. He states that the sexual assault on May 28, 2023, was first reported to the SRO at Stonebridge at 1.24 p.m. The mother of the victim arrived at the school at 1.35 p.m. and went to be with the victim, and the father arrived at 2.14 p.m. Finally out to the public, and the public can see clearly where the mistakes have fallen. This does is shows moms and dads across America that you know you need to stand up for your children you need to be bold and strong and loud their legal duty is to keep our children safe and they didn't do that the victim and family left the school accompanied by a deputy at 3 14 p.m to meet the sheriff at his office about the video reference he says that it was taken four days later when the parents were called by the school due to an unrelated classroom incident involving their daughter he also mentioned that the video shows the SRO acting in a professional manner. About the assault, he says that the SRO, Henry promptly investigated the fight at Stonebridge High School on September 8, 2021. The SRO coordinated with school administrators and the suspect was immediately suspended. And after that, a threat assessment was conducted where they initialized a safety plan. A search warrant for the surveillance footage was also executed on December 9th, 2021, a juvenile petition for malicious wounding was obtained for the suspect. Actually, the report says the Loudoun County Sheriff's Office effectively directed the school district to hold off on launching a Title IX investigation after the first attack 
even though the report says the school district was legally obligated to do so. It took months for the district to launch a Title IX investigation because the district's Title IX coordinator thought they needed to get information about the attack from the sheriff's office, which the sheriff's office was slow to provide. The director of school administration told the Title IX coordinator, this is an example where we by law have to be involved earlier in the process. The report found that the attacker was not transferred to Broad Run until the day before school started that fall. They allowed a rapist to run the halls. You know, they found him trying to sneak home on the school bus. I mean, what kind of security is that? And only because the attacker's mother had explained multiple times to the Stonebridge High Principal that a judge said her son could not return to Stonebridge. And that wraps up today's content. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up. Until next time, stay curious and keep exploring. Bye.